Hi everyone. Today on the channel I'm going to be installing a Speedwino ECU, specifically a UA4C, which I bought here from DIY EFI. And I will be installing that on my 1973 Datsun 510. Picture of it here. I do have previous experience with the UA4C Speedwino ECU. I've got one installed on my Honda Civic. Uh, there's some other videos about that car on the channel as well. But today, I'm just going to be installing it as spark only. Uh, so I'm going to keep the carburetors for now. But this should be a little bit better than the distributor that's on it currently. Uh, and also, it's pretty simple. I found that out when I uh, wired the Civic up. Surprisingly simple to get a car running on spark only. So here is the wiring plan for this car. Uh, the ones with the colours against them are the wires I'll be using today. As you can see, really, really simple. There are only four different wires to be used, although the ground is sort of four wires in itself. So we've got, yeah, these ground cables in the black. There's four of those in total. 12 volt in the uh, crank sensor input. I'm going to be using a Hall Effect sensor, so you only need the one. If you were going with a VR sensor, you'd need the corresponding negative to go with that. And the only output from this ECU is over here, which is the ignition output. I'll be using it to drive a uh, coil driver using the standard coil and distributor setup. So this is the general plan. Fit trigger wards crank pulley uh, and mount the crank trigger sensor. Uh, these two are about the only thing that I think is going to be potentially difficult or time consuming with this uh, it depends on the car setup you're using. Some cars will have an off-the-shelf uh, crank pulley and trigger setup you can use, in which case this step was really simple. So in the case of the Honda, for example, I used an um, injection cars distributor, which has a 24-tooth wheel inside of it, along with a corresponding VR sensor. And I simply ground one of the teeth off this and use this as a 24 minus one wheel. Very, very straightforward and simple. In this case, I'm going to have to adapt something to fit onto the standard front pulley and go from there. So step three is going to be wiring everything up. As mentioned before, there's only four wires for the ECU and the crank trigger itself has three wires. Should be fairly straightforward. At which point I will try and fire the car up running on the current coil and distributor and all that sort of stuff. And I will basically test the input from the crank sensor to make sure everything's behaving sensibly before I try and get it to control spark. This is also one of the benefits of doing this in stages. If I was going straight to injection and the car didn't run, you're left with a lot of questions as to what's causing it to not run. By doing it in this order and testing it first, hopefully I can get a nice clean signal out of the crank trigger, in which case doing the final step, which is wiring everything up to control the coil, should be fairly straightforward with no more issues. 3.28 AM. Here I've done a little bit of CAD work uh, to design a case for the CCU. You can buy uh, sort of aluminium extruded cases that fit straight away, but you'll have to modify the end face here to let the uh, sockets through. And also the aluminium cases tend to be a little bit bulkier due to where you've got to put the map sensor through. So this is the design I've come up with. Should be nice and simple, nice and compact. Uh, in total, it's only about 20 mil in height here, excluding the map sensor port and the main box is 100 by 100 mil square. So it's a very, very compact ECU. Tomorrow. Just tapping some holes for the trigger wheel, and I thought I'd show you what I do if I need some nice, accurate, perpendicular holes tapped. Use pillar drill. Let whatever you're tapping float around freely. A little bit downward pressure. Start it by hand. I'm going to use an old punch to Turn this by hand. I mean, you don't get wonky tapped holes. Accuracy is key when you're mounting trigger wheels. You want them to be nice and concentric. So a little tip I use is some uh, 3D printed guides. So I've got one here that goes on the outside. Another one here for the center. And that ensures when you put your trigger wheel on, all being well, Nice and concentric. Here's another 
guide I printed, which is what I used to uh, drill the initial holes. So once that was all mounted on there, drilled the holes. Here we are a little while later, on the uh, pulley and trigger wheel now mounted to the car. I've also uh, fabric cobbled up a little bracket on this side to mount the trigger sensor. It's an E36 Hall effect sensor. I'll put a picture on the screen to show a better picture of what that bracket looks like. But it's nice and discreet, hidden down there, behind the alternator. You can't really see it unless you're looking for it. With the trigger wheel and uh, sensor mounted, next thing to do is wiring, and that's about it really. As shown at the beginning of the video, uh, there's not really that much to do for uh, spark only. Just be power, signal and ground to the sensor. A vacuum line to the intake manifold. Power and ground to the ECU itself. Very, very simple. Oh, and the uh, trigger to the coil. Okay, so here we've got a fairly janky setup just to do some uh, initial testing. Got the crank sensor in place plugged in so we've got a uh, power signal and ground to the sensor 12 volt feed floating output we've got battery here for some 12 volts of ground speedweedo has got ground plus 12 volts and the signal from the crank sensor tuner studio set up on the world's worst laptop uh, so not controlling spark at this point I'll fire up with the original coil and everything uh, we'll see if we can Lock some teeth. There we go. Lovely, clean looking, uh, tooth count there. Looks good. So this looks pretty dodgy but I think I've got everything wired up now so we should be able to run the car. We've got the crank trigger plugged in, got the ECU power and grounded along with the uh, crank trigger signal. Just sitting on the intake manifold over here we've got a coil driver which is then connected to the coil down here. Um, with a bit of luck this should be all we need to uh, run this on the new ECU. Here goes nothing. So after verifying everything worked outside the car, here we are inside after a little bit of wiring. Uh, not many connections here, as you can see. From left to right we've got the vacuum signal, uh, the Hall effect crank signal, uh, yellow is power, these black ones are grounds, USB, and the uh, blue and red one is the output for the coil. Time to mount it. So the wiring's all buttoned up for now. Uh, next job is to accurately set the base timing. So I've got the DTI out and uh, I've put some little timing marks here. So the uh, the long mark on the pulley there is uh, zero degrees. The little dash is 10 degrees in advance versus the white mark on this bracket here. Uh, I'll fire it up, set it to 10 degrees and we'll see how far off we are. So here's the uh, trigger angle that I initially started with, minus 160 degrees. Came up with that number uh, just by going to TDC, well, before I made my nice thing to marks, and counting teeth, but estimating it's uh, close enough to get it fired up. But now I've got accurate timing marks on the pulley. We'll adjust this a little bit. Not sure the uh, timing light footage is really going to come across very well on camera. <clears throat> But it looked like when we were targeting 10 degrees fixed, we were actually getting about 20 degrees of advance. So I've offset the trigger angle by 10 degrees. Uh, I've double checked it with the timing light again. Spot on 10 degrees now.
So the first drive is complete with the uh, new ECU. And I'll be honest, it didn't go great. As we can see from uh, some of these graphs here. We've got a few instances of miswire, so RPM down the bottom here. You see these huge spikes in RPM measurement up to 17,000 RPM. This car is not that sporty. Uh, at the same time, we've also got some uh, changes in dwell angle that coincide with the same sort of spikes. Uh, advance, again, spikes at the same point. Uh, and in white here, we can see sync loss errors. Lots of them. So in just the brief uh, drive down the street and back, and it was 45 sync loss. Uh, not great, so I'm going to do a bit of investigation and see if we can make this a bit better. So I've done some uh, tooth logging here to try and identify why I was getting the misfire. Uh, for the most part, the uh, the signal looks quite good. Like this uh, page. Uh, again, looks pretty good. Mm, less good. So this dropout here so basically a bar has been split into uh, a very small one another one you generally end up with two bars that add up to about the same time as a normal one uh, basically means that we've got a a spike in the signal between teeth hopefully not too difficult to rectify eventually little bit of troubleshooting later and I think I've managed to make the issue a lot better <clears throat> so this was uh, another just quick drive around the block and as of the end of the drive I have zero sync loss which is great uh, how I rectified the previous issue was uh, threefold so firstly I found that the crank trigger input wire to the ECU the uh, the female pin in the Molex connector wasn't fully seated. So I sorted that out, made sure that all the wiring was correct. There was no loose connections anywhere. Uh, the trigger signal in looked to be the only one that had any sort of issue. And even then, I'm not sure that was the whole issue. I think it was fine. But it's sorted now anyway. Secondly, uh, upon a bit of a YouTube search, Google search, uh, I've changed to a falling edge trigger signal, which apparently is uh, likely to be more reliable than the rising edge signal I was using previously. Uh, I checked the timing after doing that and it didn't require any changes to the base timing or anything like that. The ECU just took, took care of everything, so that was okay. And thirdly, I have spaced the crank sensor slightly further away from the trigger wheel. So this is a Hall Effect sensor, which they generally have quite a big operating range. Normally between about 1 and 5 millimetres. I measured the distance before I moved it, and it was just under a millimetre, about 0.8, which could be introducing a bit more noise. I've increased the thickness of the spacer and moved it back. It's now about 1.3, 1.4 mil. Uh, again, yeah. Took it for a quick drive, no sync loss issues at all. Uh, I'll take it for a bit of a longer drive in a minute. And hopefully it's all good now. <laughs>